So someone told me to stop talking about politics. I need to get back to consciousness. But, you know, you really can't get away from politics. You know, like when people say things like, I'm not, I'm not into politics or I don't care about politics. That just shows you the level of conditioning because everything you do, I mean, humans are political. It's like, uh, I believe it was Aristotle. He said, uh, a man is a political animal. And that's the reality of it. Politics is just social interactions or, you know, the beliefs we have about where the society should go or how we should believe or whatever. I mean, that's politics. Politics is not necessarily politicians. That's a, you know, that sort of becomes a caricature. But the reality is, like I said, humans are political. I mean, that's just our nature. Uh, there was some, uh, actually, I think it was Mao Zedong. He said, um, you know, he said, uh, politics is war without the bloodshed. And uh, war is politics with bloodshed. That's what it is. And everything you do, not everything, but just living in this society, just using money is political. Because money, fiat currency, and just currency period, is decreed by the government, the political authorities. It's Money is a political fiction. This is Most people don't actually know that. A lot of serfs and peasants in this world, they think money is like the realest thing ever. And all you got to do is just work and you just get money and it transforms into food, clothing, and shelter and and then all the wants and shit that you need. But, you know, money is a political fiction. It's not real. It's a, just a medium of exchange that, that is a contrivance. Just like government. It's a contrivance of humans. They come together so they can figure out some way to, quote, survive together. That's all it is. It's another contrivance. But money is a political contrivance. You spent money today. You did something political. You think that, uh, you know, it was, you know we, the major beliefs that everybody have you know this current or this epic or whatever like abortion or whatever you have a belief about that that's political because there's people in society that don't believe in that and vice versa taxes drugs i mean you smoke or you don't smoke that's political you don't believe people should smoke or you think people should not smoke or whatever that's political essentially you really can't get away from politics in general what the true definition of politics so you know, that's naive to say, you know, it's all intertwined. I mean, you have to address the situation that you're in because you still have a body mind. And you live with other people who have, you know, their own agendas. And so you're still in the world. So you're not just going to run into consciousness. It's not going to solve your, your practical. It's not going to solve all of your bodily entanglements because you're still in the world. So yes, consciousness is higher than that. But again, you still have a body mind, so you're still entangled in political affairs. So, you know, again, that's naive. And I would think a lot of my listeners don't say silly shit like that because, again, that just shows that you're just some trained, you know, livestock of civilization who doesn't even realize the superstructure that is a part of. Uh, you just, you know, again, just want to work and collect little tokens and get stuff and think that just lasts indefinitely and doesn't work like that. And for the most part, you know, like America has been free of, you know, major political disruptions, you know, relative to what we see like on the news, you know, people who grew up in the 90s or whatever, or in the 2000s, but especially the 90s, there were, there were a lot of, you know, you're always on the news, you're always seeing, you know, the Serbia, the Middle East, and even Africa, even parts of Asia, there's always like turmoil and, and political up, you know, distress and civil unrest and all these things going on and generally america has been free of that for the most part you know we, we have these you know things going on especially racial and even sometimes financial you have protests but generally we haven't had what you know a lot of what we see in a lot of other countries you know um we've been relatively you know free of that but of course that's clearly changing i mean it's coming to a point where there's going to be are going to have to be some type of, uh, of course, civil disobedience, but even uh, civil unrest because, or there will be civil unrest because, you know, all these mandates and things coming down, you know, a lot of people aren't going for it. And I would say over half the people aren't going for it. They try to make it look like a lot of people or most people are, but most people aren't. But the issue is they're in power so they can make it look like it because they own all the media. And it's like, uh, I mean, it's clear that the conservative side is losing. It, the left is winning and the conservatives aren't perfect. The left isn't perfect either. You know, at one point you would argue a lot of thinkers. I know a lot of people, especially into, you know, you know, just thinking outside the box. The truth is you would probably be closer to a liberal progressive. 
because you know conservatives are usually just staunch bible thumpers and there's nothing wrong with the bible because you can get a lot of wisdom out of the bible but you know their interpretation of it is very uh caricaturized and they're you know they're a little too you know religious -y, all god and country and all this you know fanaticism that you see on the conservative side but at the same time, they're the only side that's trying to defend individual freedom and liberty. You know, all that don't tread on me. So politically, you would find a, sort of an ally from that stance because we're in a very uh, abnormal situation. But again, I know a lot of thinkers, you know, people who think outside the box consider themselves, you know, uh, you know, creatives, even spirituals. I mean, we'll act like, well, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. Well, that's fine. But in your thinking, you're probably closer to a liberal progressive. Most likely, you're not going to be a conservative. You know, most people are conservative because they don't believe in abortion. A lot of the, let's just be real, a lot of the new age thinkers or whatever, they would straddle the fence about it, but you're probably pro choice. Let's just say that. You're not going to be religiously against abortion. And there's a lot of other issues. But again, 2020 has exposed the left. Because again, at one point, the left, the progressives, the liberals, they could have made a case for being the more. Not necessarily honest, but the more um, compassionate in the sense, the more compassionate party. Of course, the left is all about, you know, social programs, higher taxes. And, of course, you should help people. And, of course, with the, the conservatives is lower the taxes. Damn all the social programs. You know, everybody just needs to go to work. And, you know, it's, they sound cold hearted. But the left, it sounds so enticing. Oh, here, uh, UBI, universal basic income. You don't even have to work. Oh, really? Uh, here, we'll, we'll give you unemployment checks forever as long as you just keep wearing a mask and lock down forever and, and just and get this vaccine. So, that, of course, that's where it leads. It leads to authoritarianism. So that's the problem with the left is they don't see where socialism leads. It doesn't lead to this utopia of equality because the truth is, I mean, life is just not equal. People are not equal. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. So it's, it's unreal. It's just as unreal as how, how the left sees the right as these, you know, these hyper religious like people that are worshiping, um, you know, Trump. But, you know, as some like some theocracy almost like they would uh, the right would almost invite a theocracy, a Christian theocracy into the world. And that would be another hell. But as you can see, the left also would bring in another hell of authoritarianism and scientism and just trust the science trust the science everything is fucking science like you see these these signs that they have in their yard especially where i'm at um it's a we believe science is real love is love it's like what the fuck are you talking about like science is real really science is real no what they're really saying is the bullshit science we're telling you is real like global warming and all this nonsense and this covid19 bullshit is fake it's not real. That's why they got to say it's real because it's not real. Now you have this immigration issue with the country and it's like, oh, everybody should just love is love. All humans are, are legal and all this. Like, come on. That's a little extreme, right? You can't just let anybody into your, you know, your, your area or whatever. That's why people have fences on their house and they lock their doors. So it's hypocritical to say everybody should just be allowed to come in. You don't let anybody in your house. And then they make the right sound racist. And so it goes back and forth with this left-right paradigm. Because, again, we're, we're political animals. And then you have, um, right right now, again, you have the, the these evictions going down because of the, the communist lockdowns, the pointless lockdowns um, that the left were cheering on. And even on, uh, and I spoke about it before with these, these the anti-natalists, <laughs> a lot of them are, so they're blind leftists. They're like leftist activists. And so, you know, they want the government to come in and say we have the right to die, which is fine. But it's like begging the government to do that is ultimately naive, but it just shows kind of their statism. And so when this whole fake convict hoax, you know, struck, which only happened by way of propaganda, you know, because we never experienced nobody ever was in Walmart. And just suddenly I, I went down a dog food aisle and somebody was <gasps> COVID, COVID, oh, oh, oh. And then sound the alarm. We need to shut down. What? That none of that shit happened. Only thing that happened is some propaganda from China. You saw some fucking images of people in China on the ground. Ain't no telling what they're doing. They either be actors or they're probably poisoned by some type of gas or whatever. But it wasn't the particle. It wasn't Cyrus the virus. It was all made up propaganda bullshit. But we seen the left just adhere to these 
the superstitious, silly cult. They're a cult now. The left is a fucking cult now. So they've lost all credibility in my eyes. Like I said, before all this, they could have gotten away with it. But now they have little credibility. And it's the left is leading us into authoritarianism. So you would want, you know, strategically thinking, you would want the right to kind of counterbalance that. But as we can see, even the right is now corrupted. And so it really looks like we're in a time of most of the politicians are corrupted and selling out, you know, the nation. It's just a weird thing that people do when they sell out their own nation. I, I'll never understand that. But a lot of the stuff that they're putting in place, you know, the effects of this stuff down the road, this is just not good. And they're in, in, in our generation and pretty soon we're going to have to face the threat of, you know, destabilization. Basically, you got food shortages, uh, blackouts coming. They got, you know, they're going to shut the power off intentionally, but they're going to say it was hackers. You're just going to cause or try to cause a lot of problems for people so we can submit to a new system. Now, it's not going as seamlessly as they hoped, you know, in a lot of cases, because in some countries, I believe, like Greece, they say they have an extremely high uh, vax rate, like Israel. But I think in the U.S., I don't think it's I don't think it's sixty percent. I don't even think I don't. It might be fifty, but I really don't think it's that high. A lot of these places are empty, so the, the dupes, the original dupes, you know, first lined up and got the shot. But the real evil in this is the is the teenagers and the adolescents. And I'll post a link to a, a clip of a teenager who's crying. She doesn't want to get it, and these ignorant slave people. These intellectual slaves who can't think, they're all, her parents, i.e. her parents, <laughs> and these fake wannabe health practitioners that you're calling nurses these days, which they're halfway good, but halfway detrimental because nurses, I'm not going to bash fucking nurses. They do a hard job. But the point is this 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 superstition of, over these jabs and over these particles and just forcing it on these kids, is, this is the real evil. And no one should be taking the stuff, but just the fact that they're pushing it on the kids and the children and babies is the real evil behind this whole thing. So, and again, this is a leftist agenda, and you're not hearing the left say much. I spoke to one of these guys, um, one of these admins on one of these uh, forums, you know, and basically, again, they're a fucking cult. These people, they're not stupid, though. They're very intelligent, but they've chosen a side blindly. Well, this is another weird thing that people do. And so even you'll see like, you know, uh, intellectuals, the people who you know are not stupid, yet they're going along with this. It's just people's motives are so, this shit is disturbing sometimes. And even now you still see people, um, depending on where you're at or where you go, you might see people still wearing masks. I see people with masks up to their eyes still. And it's disturbing and almost, for some reason, it's offensive. Because the people who know what's behind, if you know what's behind this agenda and what its purpose is, this is a very evil and wicked agenda, and they're just going along with it and, and calling you a conspiracy theorist. So it's very disheartening. It's almost like at this point, you know, I feel sorry for them. Like, go get go get this shit. Go get three and four. Go get five jabs. Get ten fucking jabs. Just get the hell out of my view. I don't want to see you anymore or even be around these type of people. Like, it's really, um, you know, inspiring. <laughs> it really inspires you to, you know, try to go live off the land or live alone or in a hermitage or something away from society because this is really um you know this is really not good and it's not over yet um because it's like we're in the middle of an uh we're at the eye of the hurricane because as soon as the uh, fda authorizes this poison officially which is which really means nothing at all because they they'll authorize anything and and, and unauthorized things that really help because right now they're trying to put these supplements. They've been trying this for over a decade. They're trying to get supplements, herbs, and aminos, even these amino acids, off the shelves because they work. And so the future, their future plan is really ugly because, see, the bad part is most people don't understand their own health. They don't understand natural health. They don't understand the true healthy paradigm. Like, again, I talked to this one, this leftist on this forum, and... This guy really was trying to make this absurd point. He's a, see, there he's a pessimist, so he knows nature's evil. So what he says is, well, people who believe in natural medicine are deceived because they think nature is good, but it's not. See, it's all about science and modern medicine and 
taking 72 jabs before the age of five. Like, but it's what he's not realize what he's saying is what you don't understand is your body is a part of nature. Yes. Nature is evil and it shouldn't continue ideally because it's a wicked system. But since you have a body and your body is made of nature, the healing agents need to come from that similar substance or that similar medium. You don't introduce foreign and, and metals and chemicals in order to so-called heal it or whatever. Now, those things can be used, again, in traumatic situations like you have. They have these powerful painkillers, which if you're in excruciating, powerful pain, then use them temporarily and then detox yourself. But. 95% of that stuff is just not good and it shouldn't be used. So, no. Yes, nature is evil, but yeah, your body is a part of nature. It's not like you're in nature. You're not the body. You're not the body. That's the problem. You're still dealing with body identification. So, just because nature is not good doesn't mean natural medicine is bad. No, the system is... I don't even want to say harmonic with itself because this is not really a harmonic system. But in a sense, the you know, the ingredients like, you know... The body is basically like a fruit or a vegetable. That's how you can look at the the bones can be like branches and the flesh is like it's like vegetables. And even they you'll see these insects. They have insects that um or this glorious creator uh generated insects that look like leaves and sticks. I'll post a link to it if I can find it. But that goes for all bodies around here. It's all a part of nature, even though you know our, our bodies are, um, you know, I wouldn't say are, they're not really yours. You don't own them. But we're not rooted in the ground like plants or whatever. But you're still a part of nature, even though it's hard for your mind to comprehend how the first body even got here. Like I said, we're just, the human brain cannot really fathom that. You're not, we're not designed to really know that. But again, like I said, the, 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 these crazy leftists, they're so, they worship science and they think they're they're better, but there's no better than the, than the right worshiping a superstitious God in the air. They worship the God of science, which is really man, which is really like worshiping Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, worship them fucking crooks. You put, let's pull up their rap sheet. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like I said, the left has lost all credibility. These leftist intellectuals, I don't know what they're fucking doing. They're lost. The right is, the right, basically you have the right who's traditionally brainwashed and then you have the left who's radically brainwashed and so again it would be wise i guess in this scenario to say you're independent i wouldn't don't pick any party this thing is corrupted and you could be about your values but again a lot of people like us will find ourselves politically homeless i'm not joining any fucking crowd even the right even though the right is against the tyranny i see them as in this case in this context they will be like political allies since we're in their situation because believe me, if the one party took over, which they which they really which they want to see, which will be hard because this is still even though all this bullshit, this is still America. And that's all we got. We got the states and it's still America and there's still this individualistic, you know, attitude. But again, 2020 was very disheartening to kind of hard to still believe in that. But ultimately, you know, you're still dealing with we have a, a so-called a two-party system i know same bird two wings i know we know blah blah okay but all we could do now is look for the nuances and on the right at least some not all because the establishment ones don't give a fuck either um they would be you know trying to argue for individual freedom and liberty more likely than someone on the left who would just either stay silent or just endorse big government which, as we can see, is a big fucking problem. So, you know, ultimately, there is no solution to humanity. There is no solution. We'll never get the perfect society. It's impossible because the flaw is not in the imperfect society. The flaw, as we know, is in our existence. So there's always going to be problems because, you know, every day you wake up with the same problem you had yesterday, which is how the fuck am I going to take care of this body? You know, you can't get to your pleasure before you get to, you know, taking care of your body. So we got to figure that out every day. And, you know, that's this is the mess that we get. The world. People and societies. Messes, essentially. But that's what you call politics. And that's just life. Life is politics. So you're not getting around it. So, you know, if you're just going to turn your mind off to public affairs, it's exactly how Plato said it. He said, 
the price that good men pay or good people pay for indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. And that's what's going on. You can't neglect this stuff. And a lot of us, you get into a position where you just want to just want to earn money. That's it. You just want to make sure you earn your money and pay your bills. It's like it's very small because it's you know, we live in a fake, you know, a simulation almost. You now, people call the system the matrix. It's really not the matrix. It is a matrix, but it's not the matrix. The matrix is existence. You know, the matrix originally meant the mother, the womb, a breeding female. Existence is the matrix that you need to ultimately break away from. But let's just say, you know, the system is a matrix. Well, you know, you got to think a little, realize that you're, living, uh, you, you're part of something bigger and more complex than just going to work, getting money, paying bills. I know we want to simplify. Everybody wants to simplify that way. But see, look what happens. Because it's like over the past 20 years, I mean, the political scape has just gotten totally corrupted. And then, bam, they've been planning this really longer, but let's just say two decades. And then, bam, 2020 March or February hit. Let's hit that switch. While we were just trying to collect money and talk our shit and all this, they were making a big plan. So, you know, it's hard to know exactly what's going on all the time with everything. And no individual can know everything. But at some point, I guess, you know, you do have to be sort of involved or if you can't be. Which like just maybe civilization, like I said, is just a fucking mess, really. Because I mean, most of the serfs will never know what the middle class, what the pre-scientists and their bullshit, what, what new trick they're trying to come up with to fool the serfs with. Nobody will, you know, you really can't know what the king's thinking. Probably thinking about sending your ass off to war <laughs> and get your gut splattered or whatever. It's hard to know what they're thinking. So, you know, because at one point, I actually, not saying for me personally, <laughs> but I believed in anarcho-primitivism. It's just a way to say that the real way for people to, the best way for humans to live is probably in small societies, closer to the state of nature. The more complex it gets, the more of a mess it gets. And, and the more it, it just takes away from ind individuality, in a sense. I mean, you can argue that, you know, simpler communities they live in cults too all cultures are cults but still you're still closer to 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 your life in a sense to the mechanisms of your livelihood you understand them i wake up you know we find that animal we kill it we cook it we eat it you know we might find some plants we eat we get sick here's a plant you heal uh, we build our house. It's a simple life. There's no people over you. Or if someone else comes to contest you or your, your land, then you just fight them. And if you die, you die. You know, you're going to die anyway. But it's probably better than living under these stranger authorities, you, people you don't know and don't know you. That's a big problem. They don't care what you think. And everybody's opinions and everybody's desires can't be accommodated. So, and it's like now where you got, you would say half the country split half and half red and blue. It's like ultimately, ideally, the country would split because you just don't get along at this point. The, the ideals are too different. I mean, you have these people who really want to wear a mask all day for no reason. Or they, or they want to push a vax on you. Or you have people who... Then you have the ignorant. You get caught up, you know, with ignorant people. You just don't even want to fucking be around. So, you know, ideally, none of this would really uh, be. But again, this is uh, this is a system of this is, we're just civilization is just the correction of need. It's not it's not built on any ideal purpose. It'll sound like it, but it's not. It's really built on necessity. This is why people come together because of misery, so they can figure out a way to survive. So probably gonna be here for a while but you know uh, what looks like what's coming though honestly is what always comes war it's pretty much what's on the horizon so don't be surprised in the net within the next five ten years if if uh if we're still here if you're still here um don't be surprised when when major war breaks out because I, i'm pretty sure it's coming uh, they didn't set up all this destabilization and propaganda just to stop. All this leads to uh, some type of war. And with the U.S., you could have some type of, uh, you know, civil, what you want to strife or fighting, but that would be chaotic too. So, you know, I, we'll see on that. But again, ultimately, um, just again, every life, society, humans are a political animal. So stop with the 
I don't care about politics nonsense. That is the most naive and childish and ignorant outlook you can have. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you got to face it. We're a part of it. You are in politics. You, you wore a mask this past year. That's political. That's a political agenda. It's not scientific at all. None of it's scientific. All the scientists are paid off. Even there's a, a quote from one of the, uh, I think it was the New England Journal of Medicine or the American Journal of Medicine, but she's an editor, a former editor of the journal, even stated, she said, you cannot believe 90% of these peer-reviewed papers. It's all bullshit. It's just like uh, somebody mentioned, it's like the evolution of political psychopathy or whatever, psycho psychopaths. They're basically political psychopaths, and it just evolves over time into what we have now. Science is totally corrupted. Big Pharma medicine is totally corrupted. I wouldn't read. All those papers are corrupted. All those papers claiming we isolated a SARS-CoV-2. They haven't isolated a damn thing. The thing doesn't exist. You cannot extract tissue from a human and then make up this narrative of how these particles got in the tissue. And just say, oh, it must have flew in the air and landed in his mouth and crawled in the cells. And, or it was generated endogenously. Meaning it was due to the terrain, meaning the chemicals, the foods and whatever it, it evolved from the inside. That's where you got it from. Right. Well, that's where it came from. It didn't come from the outside and it didn't cause anything. So we have the point where over this year, a lot of people have been learning that virology is a sham. But since it's been politicized because everything's political. Now virology of our allergies are supposedly at the forefront of this and of a pandemic. And, and, and but it's all fake. It's all fake. They're just in the lab hyper analyzing and being sophisticated about nonsense and silliness. Just collecting a check. You know, we get ill by our own means and causes. Health is a personal thing. This is why all the even all the wise and the sages made remarks about health. And even a lot of the um like the Vedas and stuff, they go into health also. A lot of the uh the cultivators, it's a, they address the health issues too. Because it's a part of it. Um, health and the politics. You got to be aware of the scenario you're in. Like, again, you, like I said, you still got a body. So so the whole political, this, this medicine paradigm that we're in, was fake. Uh, none of it should be. None of it's real. Um, just, again, just you go to them for trauma. You know, mechanical trauma or anything like that. Get patched up. Get out. Detox. And, and get as long as you can. Because they're coming after the, the natural supplements and things. But as long as they're available, get to that stuff. Get to your fruits and your leafy greens. And, 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 and that's how you stay healthy, relatively healthy. It's not by, you know, injecting yourself with this clear liquid stuff that you can't spell. You don't know what's in it. It's a religion. And um, it's taken out a lot of people and maiming a lot of people. And even somebody in my family got blood clots already. Doctor seen it, her legs blood clot, and doctor seen it in her skin, like botchy and looks bruisy. And the doctor gave her some fucking skin cream. <laughs> he gave her some skin cream. That's how ignorant they are. They never address the internal environment. They're not even trained to. And again, since everybody has to eat, most doctors aren't gonna. They're not gonna buck the system because they got to get their check. So you know, it goes into uh, the fact that um. Like hunger, this whole hunger system, like I uh, spoke about, like we always speak about, it's evil as fuck because it corrupts you and it makes you do things you don't want to do. The wise consider hunger and thirst as great evils. They're the great natural evils that you can't fix them. So the goal is not that you can't fix the world because that's just a, a vague delusional concept. It doesn't mean anything. Um, make a better body. <laughs> that's the, Just make better bodies in there. The world is fixed. Take away these miserable, painful needs and people won't inflict, and even creatures, they won't inflict pain on others to compensate for it. Because that's where the source of all this, all this evil starts, is you're, 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 you're in pain from having a body. So you, so you inflict pain on other creatures, so you, you can eat them or whatever, even plants. You know, plants want to grow toward the sun and then, I guess, peacefully return to the root or whatever. But, you know, we kill them and eat them too and devour them. It's designed like that, but that's the whole point. It, you can't make a better world. You can't fix the world you don't have to fix the world you got to make better bodies it's like there's an uh there's this buddhist scripture that says you know the um they call it the the the, the uh the body which arises from the they call it the filthy pot like womb is an unsatisfactory suffering mess 
That's how they look at the body, an unsatisfactory, suffering mess. Now, a fool would deny that as they run in circles, suffering from the shit, trying, trying to accommodate it every fucking hour. But they'll deny that. And that's the truth. So that's the source of the problem. So I'm not saying we're about to figure out some scheme to get the perfect world, a perfect society, whatever. Um, again, the best thing ideally would be to just be, you know, off grid or whatever. You got people, you know, all this solar power stuff. You're still going to need some tech, some modern technologies, ideally. But honestly, before I do all that, I'll just return to the origin, honestly. Because <laughs> that's, I'm domesticated, pretty much. I'm not chopping wood. I'm not, I'm not going to fetch water. <laughs> None of that shit. It's not happening. I've been thoroughly domesticated and brainwashed, so... Peace.